Hey guys, thanks for watching DIY Brian. In this video, we're going to fix the door locks on this four door Camry. Each one of the door locks have failed on this and the door lock actuators need to be either repaired or replaced. In this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you guys how to replace these little lock motors that are inside the door lock actuators so that you don't have to replace the entire door lock actuator. All right, so first you start by removing the door panel to get to the door lock actuator. And you don't need too many tools, just a basic impact driver, a flat-headed screwdriver. To get the door lock actuator slash latch out of the door, you will need a Torx bit to get the three bolts out on that side. So in this particular model, you've got uh, the handle here, and underneath the handle are two screws. So you want to take your flat-headed screwdriver and just pop that off, and then take the screws out using your impact driver. Okay, next you want to take your uh, little plastic panel inside this little handle here out. There's going to be a screw behind there. Let's take your flat-headed screwdriver and pry the little trim piece out. Take the screw out. Okay, so now it's time to pull the panel off the door. And you want to carefully pull the clips away there's going to be plastic clips that attach this door panel to the door. On the back of the panel, you've got the power window switch. You've got to disconnect that by using a flat-headed screwdriver or your thumb, push the top tab back, and go ahead and pull that out. On the door handle, you've got some cables that you've got to disconnect. Just pull these out of their locking mechanism and out. Now you've got these three screws here that hold in the latch. Um, they're going to be a Torx head type screw. Pull this uh, plastic sheeting back and then disconnect the lock wires by just sticking your finger in the locking tab and pull that out. And the latch, you're just gonna have to kind of wiggle it down and it'll come out of there. Okay, so now that we've got the latch slash door lock actuator removed from the vehicle, now it's time to install a new one of these little motors. So typically when these actuators stop working, this little motor here wears out and just can't turn the lock back and forth. So you've got a couple options at replacing this. So you can carefully disassemble this entire latch here, uh, which you've got to be really, really careful at disassembling. It's got some gears, it's got some mechanisms, it's got some levers inside of it. And if you take it apart and it springs all over the place, you could lose pieces or you could just not figure out how to get it back together. They can be kind of tricky. The other option is, is you can find where the electric uh, motor is at and you can actually cut the little motor out of the plastic actuator. Now this, you've also got to be really careful because you can't cut too far into this and damage the moving mechanism parts inside there or the circuitry that's inside of it. So you've got to be really careful and you've got to kind of plan out your cuts if you're going to do that. I mean, ideally we would just put a new one of these latches in here. We wouldn't change this little motor. We'd just buy a whole new latch slash, slash actuator, but on this model, they're like 500 bucks a piece. And if you're doing all four doors, you've got a, you know, a couple thousand dollars worth of uh, uh, parts there where these things cost like 10 bucks. Now, not every car, these aren't that expensive. Some you can buy them 70, 80 bucks. And if that's the case, I would much rather buy the entire latch slash actuator for 70, 80 bucks than tear this apart and change this little thing or cut it open or whatever. 
In this case, we're gonna to try to save these $500 parts and replace the little motor. All right, so now to install the new little motor, we've got to take this thing apart a little bit further before we can cut it. So I'm gonna show you guys just kind of as demonstration purposes, if you can't get yours safely apart, how to safely cut it out of there. Start by pulling this little tab back. Then you can see you've got this mechanism in here. Now you can just pull this out and then twist the cord until you can just slide this out of its little slot. Okay, so now we've got that one out. <clears throat> You've also got to pull this other cable out. Pry this lever up and pull that little mechanism out. Now on this model, we've got to take this little plastic cover off of the actuator. So the motor is just right here, hooked to a little plastic gear to another plastic gear that moves back and forth and locks the mechanism here. You can see you've got the two connections here that the wires hook up to. It sends power and ground into it at one direction and it makes the lock go one way. And then it reverses the polarity and makes the lock go the other direction. To safely cut this, we're going to use a Dremel tool and just cut a line directly here, here, and then we'll just make one section and pull this off and get in there and replace the little motor. So I have to apologize, my camera turned off autofocus, so the focus is horrible on the uh, uh, part where I was cutting out the um, uh, door lock actuators. So what I've done is I've carefully cut this little cover right off the top of here. So what you've gotta do is you've gotta be really careful. As you can see, I had to cut across this line right here, but I didn't want to go too far or I damaged this gear. So I made this straight cut here and then a straight cut here and another one right here so that I could pull this portion of the cover off. And then what we'll do is we'll take some plastic weld and we'll put the cover back on. Once we've installed the new motor, we'll take and plastic weld all the joints back together so that it holds together nice and strong. So you could take this little motor here, you can see how it has those two metal contacts, put the plastic gear, this is the new one here. So just take the motor and carefully install it right back into the slot and it just kind of pushes and locks into place. You can see this gear just moves this thing back and forth. All right, so to plastic weld the cover back onto the actuator, I've picked up a couple products here. This is a JB Weld uh, plastic putty, and this is a plastic weld that's more of an epoxy. This cures up really, really fast. So on certain spots of the cover, I'm going to use this, but on certain parts of the cover, I'm going to use this putty here. And the reason why I wanna use the putty is this is nice because if you need to reshape it, you can sand it back down either with sandpaper or uh, the Dremel tool with uh, one of those little um, uh, grinding attachments. Uh, so if you need to reshape it so that it fits better, uh, this uh, plastic putty, uh, welding putty, is going to work out better. Now I'm going to link uh, in the show more tab right below the video, I'll link these products to Amazon and along with those little uh, motors that I've used on this actuator. You want to pay attention, um, depending on the car that you have, some of them have a real short shaft and then some of them have a longer shaft. And from my experience, it's been like the Hondas and the Acres are going to have a longer shaft and the Toyotas all have this shorter shaft. 